Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is the start of my September book haul. We are going to continue on with this vlog style haul thing. Y'all seem to enjoy it. I've kind of been enjoying doing it and it's kind of satisfying to open all the packages on camera and like get my reactions to things. So, so we're just going to continue on with that. <laughs> Today I've just got one package to open for you. I believe this is from Penguin Teen and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. They told me they were sending me a finished copy of a book that I did read the e-arc for and liked. So let's see if I'm right. Yep. <laughs> It is Seaton Girls by Charlene Thomas. This is kind of a hard-hitting YA contemporary novel, primarily following a young woman who is one of just a handful of black students at an elite prep school that is predominantly white. She is the editor of the student newspaper. Her longtime boyfriend is a football player who's a junior who's being set up to be the head of or one of the main players on the varsity football team. And everybody at their school is obsessed with the football team. They're sort of like lauded and worshipped to a certain extent. But there are some darker, darker things, and she finds out some stuff when there's a big relational blowout between one of the main players on the varsity football team and his girlfriend and their friend group, and she's got to decide what she's going to do as the writer of the school paper. I really like this a lot. It was a bit slow to start, but it ended up being really excellent. It does deal with some really tough topics like the sexual exploitation of teen girls, so heads up in terms of content warnings there, but I want to say give this like four or four and a half stars. I really liked it. I had an ERC from NetGalley and uh, Penguin Teen was kind enough to send me a finished copy, so thank you so much to them. If that sounds up your alley, go check it out. Hello, it's the same day, but it's nighttime and a package arrived in the mail, so I thought I would open it. I know what this is. I'm really excited. This is a package from Lindsay Puckett, who is a YouTuber and a first-time author. Her debut middle grade novel is coming out soon, and she had reached out to me to see if I would be interested in getting a copy for review, and of course I said yes. So let's open this. I love the purple. It is The Glass Witch by Lindsay Puckett. I love the cover. It's adorable. It's a middle grade fantasy novel with a fat main character and a hijabi friend, a whimsical body positive adventure about a witch with no powers figuring out where her magic truly comes from. And it comes out October 18th, so not too much longer. I am so excited about this. Oh, how cute. She also included this adorable little uh, bookmark, I guess. It says toadstool clippings. That's super cute. Oh my gosh. You are the magic. I love it. Congratulations, Lindsay. Definitely go and check out her book, pre-order it. I will have a link down below, especially because with the new Barnes & Noble policy, she is one of the affected authors whose hardcover may not be carried in stores. So definitely go pre-order it. It looks amazing. I'm so excited to have it. Thank you. Hello, I have three packages from Macmillan. Uh, I, I think I know what two of these might be, but I'm not sure what the third one is. So let's open these up and find out. First package. Yes. Okay, this is one of the ones I knew. I'm so excited. This is an advanced copy of A Restless Truth by Freya Marski. This is the sequel to A Marvelous Light, which I read last year and loved, but it is a sapphic historical romantic fantasy, and I am so excited for this. Uh, yes. Maud Blythe has always longed for adventure. She expected plenty of it when she volunteered to serve as an old lady's companion on the ocean liner in order to help her beloved older brother unravel a magical conspiracy that began generations ago. What she didn't expect was for the old lady in question to turn up dead on the first day of the voyage. Now she has to deal with a dead body a disrespectful parrot, and the lovely, dangerously outrageous Violet Debenham, who's also returning home to England. Um, I feel like, yes, I'm so happy. So uh, thank you so much to Tor.com. I'm very excited. This goes on sale in November. Package number two. Yes, and it is the other one that I knew was coming. Yay, I'm so excited. This is Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell, another sequel to a book that I loved last year. In fact, one of my favorite books of the year, Winter's Orbit. This is a 
standalone novel set in the same universe, and I think it is also a gay sci-fi romance. I, I'm so excited. A standalone space adventure about a bond that will change the fate of worlds set in the same universe as Winter's Orbit. Yes! Oh, I'm so excited, y'all. So, uh, those were the two I knew were coming. I'm not sure what the other package is, so let's see. Oh, and this is also coming out in November, for those who are wondering. Package number three. It's very satisfying to rip these open. Oh, okay. I did not know they were sending, I did not know they were sending me this, but Will Do Magic for Small Change by Andrea Hairston coming out in October from Tor.com. Um, I didn't get on super great with one of her other books, but I think it might have been that specific book, so I would be interested in trying something else from her, so I may give this a try. It looks like it's sci-fi cinnamon jones dreams of stepping on stage and acting her heart out like her famous grandparents redwood and wildfire okay so this is set a couple generations after the book that i had some trouble with though she's always been theatrically challenged that won't stop her but her family life is a tangle of mysteries and secrets and nobody is telling her the whole truth before her brother died he gave cinnamon the chronicles of the great wanderer a tale of a Dahomean warrior woman and an alien from another dimension who performed at an 1893 Chicago World's Fair. A story of magic or alien science, but the connection to Cinnamon's past is unmistakable. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I may give this a try. I'm curious to see kind of what some of the reviews are probably before I pick it up, but thank you to Tor.com for sending a copy. If that sounds up your alley, go check it out. Come book shopping with me at one of my favorite indie bookstores. I am taking a couple bags of books to sell and then hoping to get some store credit to use for shopping. Hello, I am back. I'm here to show you in slightly more detail what I actually picked up. As you saw with the two bags that I brought in, they took most of the books and I got $60 in store credit, which was excellent. I ended up spending under $15 for all of the books that I bought and most of that was tax. So I'm pretty pleased to be honest. The main thing that I went in there knowing I needed to get was the three books I'm missing in the Graceling Realm series. I'm doing a read along of these and so I needed to get them anyway and I've been kind of waiting to go sell some books and use store credit for it. So we have Fire by Kristen Kishore. This one was $12.99 of my store credit. Bitter Blue, this one was used half price so it was only $6.50. And then lastly, Winter Keep, which was full price, $12.99 of my store credit. So I got all three of those, which was great, and I still had some money left, so I went looking around, as you saw, and I was so excited because I found three used books that were half price that were things that had been on my radar, so I picked them up. First up, I have a UK paperback copy of The Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lind Han. Ashley at Bookish Realm really loved this, and I've been interested in picking it up. It is a romantic fantasy that came out earlier this year, and uh, this was $10 of store credit. Again, amazing. Then I found a hardcover copy of The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. I really enjoy John Scalzi's writing. He writes kind of fun, accessible, tongue-in-cheek sci-fi, and this sounded interesting. It was $13.50, and I think I ended up paying for like $8 of that. The rest was store credit, half price because it's used. And then the final book that I found was Exhalation by Ted Chiang, which I've also been meaning to read. I have his first short story collection, haven't read it yet, but I've heard amazing things and I wanted to get a copy and it was hardcover, half price, $13, like, hello. I would say that's pretty good, six books, and I spent like $8.50 plus tax, so about $15 very pleased with that. I do have more books to sell, but they only take 40 at a time, so I will go back in the future and probably pick up more books. But uh, yeah, success. I've got two books to share today. One of them my five-year-old picked out for me, and the other one I picked up for myself. We've started doing family time on the weekends where each week of the month a different family member gets to pick an activity that we do together, including the kids. And so this weekend my youngest wanted us to buy presents for each other. So we set like a $10 per person limit and went to Barnes and Noble and like 
coordinated doing that. So my five-year-old picked out a present for me that he was convinced I was going to love and it was under the $10 limit and it is a book so I'm here to share it with you. This is Never a Duke by Grace Burroughs. I'm not sure if I have read Grace Burroughs. It is a beautiful cover and he was like mom you're gonna love this and I'm assuming it's because it's got this beautiful dress on the cover. Um, but yeah it's a historical romance. It does actually sound up my alley so uh, props to my my child. It's got a hero who was plucked from the streets and given a home but there are still whispers of his questionable past and it has a heroine who is too opinionated and intelligent and has frequently suffered judgment at the hands of polite society uh, which sounds like my kind of heroine so this sounds like it could be fun. I don't know much of anything about it. Thank you to my five-year-old for picking it out for me. Maybe I will read it for a thing someday. And then of course while I was there I picked up a copy of Amari and the Great Game. They had 20% off plus I got 10% off with my Barnes & Noble membership so I was like I am just going to grab this because I loved Amari and the Night Brothers and I knew I wanted to buy a copy of the newest book. Hello! I have book mail and it's very exciting. I've got my book of the month package and then I have two envelopes from Tor.com I think is what it looks like. So first up, book of the month. I skipped last month because there wasn't anything I was super interested in. This month there was one that sounded fun so I decided to go ahead and get it. Plus I finished the first part of the reading challenge for the year so I should have some goodies in my box for completing the reading challenge. Um, if you're not already aware, Book of the Month is a subscription service that's about $16 a month, including shipping for a new release or sometimes pre-release hardcover. You can also get up to two add-ons for like $11 a piece. And I enjoy it. I skip months sometimes if they don't have anything I'm interested in, but I think it's pretty fun. And overall, I've been mostly satisfied with the service. And uh, oh, fun. if you are interested in checking them out, I do have a link down below. It's not sponsored. It's just the one they give to everybody. And if you sign up through my link, I get a free book, which is nice, but no pressure. It's fine. Uh, okay, so let's see what we got. Yes, way to go, champ. I completed the 2022 reading challenge. Although this year they have a part two of the reading challenge, um, which I don't know that I'll do because it's like 24 books, which is kind of a lot because then you also have to have 24 books of the current year. Um, but this is very cute. And my prize for completing it is this notepad that says things I may or may not deal with later, <laughs> which I just thought was really kind of cute. There were a few different options this year. My pick for the month was Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. This sounded really fun and the reviews looked pretty good. It's, um, <laughs> this just sounds great. Older women often feel invisible, but sometimes that's their secret weapon. They've spent their lives as the deadliest assassins in a clandestine international organization. But now that they're 60 years old, four female friends can't just retire. It's kill or be killed in this action-packed thriller. So I like, it sounds great. It sounds really fun. Moving on, I'm not sure what's in this package. There's a sticker on the other one, so I kind of know what it is, but uh find out. I'm pretty sure this is from Tor.com. It feels like a novella and this is usually what they send stuff in. Oh yeah, I was right. What is this? Oh, yes. Oh yay. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. This is Lost in the Moment and Found by Sean and McGuire. It's the Wayward Children series. It's the new one. It's coming out, I think in January. That's usually what these come out. I adore this series. Thank you so much, Tor.com. I'm thrilled to have it. Yes. I, yeah, I really, really love these. So this will be out in January 2023. Yay! One that I was definitely going to read whether they sent it to me or not. Then this one, I know what it is because of the sticker. If I can do that without showing you my, uh, my address. Let's open it. Cool. So we have The Crane Husband by Kelly Barnhill. She is somebody that I have been meaning to read from, and this cover looks really interesting. It says, Kelly Barnhill brings her singular talents to a raw, powerful story of love, sacrifice, and family. Mothers fly away like migrating birds. This is why farmers have daughters. Interesting. So it's a contemporary retelling of The Crane Wife about a fiercely pragmatic teen forced to grow up faster than was fair who will do whatever it takes to protect her family and change the story. Sounds interesting. So I'm excited to check that out. When does this come out? The Crane Husband will be out in February of 2023. Thanks to Tor.com. Hello, I've got three packages to open. One of them is uh, not a book, but book adjacent. So we're gonna open it here anyway. In fact, let's start with that. 
Okay, so this beauty I am really excited about. If you don't already follow her, Brie from The Locked Booktician is amazing. And this is her third year running Black Aweenathon. It's taking place in October. It's a month long readathon dedicated to reading horror, mystery, thriller, crime writing by Black authors. And in conjunction with that, she was selling these really cool, what, are she, what is she calling it? Um, noir apothecary boxes and they look amazing. I wanted to support her. I also really wanted one of these boxes because they looked really cool. So I bought one and I'm gonna unbox it for you so you can see. She may still have some of these in her Etsy shop so I will link her Black Aweenathon announcement video that also talks about the different boxes down below if you want to go see if you can get one for yourself. Oh it is like fully taped. Okay I need I need I'm gonna need some scissors. Hold up. Oh my gosh. Okay, I finally got all the tape cuts, so let's open this baby up. Ah, cute. There's a little note from Brie. Thanks, Brie. That's so nice. So just appreciate the lovely packaging. This is so much fun. Uh, I think I got whatever box was not her highest tier, but like one step down from that. So I'm going to show you all of the goodies that came inside. First up, we have two adorable little stickers, including one with her thing for Black Aweenathon. Love it. Next is some tea from Steep and Sip, Tea with a Purpose, which I think is a black owned tea business. So I have Serenity, which let's, let's open it and see what it is. I bet it's like chamomile or something. I do like tea. Ooh, that smells good. I think it's got like mint and lavender and I don't know what else, but that smells amazing. I will definitely be trying that. It's like a whole self-care box. I love it. Oh, cute. I love this. We have some lavender bath salts. These were handmade by Brie herself. I love this. Cute packaging. Mm. Little glass jars. This is so cute. Oh my God. Like, I feel like I should stop and take a picture of this before I unwrap it, maybe. Maybe I will do that. I'm, I'm not gonna unwrap it because I want to like take a picture to put on social media and like the packaging is so cute. But inside it's got, I think this is like the lavender spray. So you like spritz it around the room for a calming scent, which I think is also made by Brie. Then we have a really cute, oh, I love that it's the moon one. This was actually the one I wanted to, so I'm excited. I didn't, I didn't specify, but I really like this. It's a book sleeve to protect your books. And again, I made my Brie. I love that it's got a little tag, the locked collection. Awesome. And this looks like a reasonably good size. I feel like I could probably fit this inside. Let's see. Oh yeah. With like, with space to spare, you could even put a slightly larger book inside. I love it. Then I don't know if this was an accident, but I got two packages of bookmarks. So thank you. Oh, nice. Oh, fancy. So it's a nice, thick, laminated Black Aweenathon bookmark. I am ready for my Black Aweenathon TBR. Thank you so much to Brie. I love this. This is amazing. You did so much work on it, and I love how it turned out. Anyway, go check out her Etsy shop and get some for yourself. I know she has limited numbers available, but um, I think they're really cool. And everything was very nicely packaged, nothing broke. So thank you to Brie, I love it. Okay, next up, let's save, uh, okay, let's save that one for last. I've got a package from Penguin Random House. I'm not 100% sure what this is. It's possible that Penguin Teen is sending me something that I just forgot about. I feel like they might have emailed me about something, let's see. Or maybe it's something completely different, who knows. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. I did. I did just forget that this was coming, but I am really excited about this. This is from Penguin Teen. It is Chaos and Flame by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. It's an advanced copy of a book coming out in March. I am really interested to read from this team of writers. It's, I think, a queer YA fantasy the first book in a duology, Sworn Enemies Bound by Prophecy, an orphan set on revenge for the murder of her family, a war prince who despises battle. In a land trapped in endless violence, their only option is to embrace the chaos and ignite the flame together. From the brilliant minds of New York Times bestselling author Justina Ireland and Tessa Grattan comes the first book in a ferocious YA fantasy duology featuring ancient magic, warring factions, and a romance between the two people in the world with the most cause to hate each other. 
I, listen, I am excited about this. I feel like this could be really good. So thank you so much, Penguin Teen. I'm excited to read it. I, I, I love this team up. Like I have loved things from Tessa Gratton and I've really enjoyed things from Justina Ireland. I, I think it's gonna be good. Lastly, one of my two special editions of Babel arrived, which I am very excited about. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I don't know what else this would be, but um, I ordered a special edition from Fox and Wit, and I have not finished reading Babel yet, but I feel like I'm going to love it. And I, I before I had read it, pre-ordered three copies, so hopefully I'm right. And I, so far, it's really good. I thought I cut this open. Maybe I didn't do it. Okay. Oh my gosh. I don't know when the other one is coming, but oh shoot. Okay, why do they do? I mean, I'm glad that they do this, but I love that they have Fox and Wit pa packing tape now. It's adorable. Very nicely packaged. It looks like it is going to be super safe, which I am happy about. And that is a great little box I can use. All right, here we go. Ugh. Ah, yay! Okay. Signed book plate. I wasn't 100% sure if I was going to get one because originally I wasn't, but I think she signed extras. So I got a signed book plate. Yay. Bye, Rebecca. So exciting. Okay, so we have this layer and another layer. Wow. This was well wrapped, y'all. Very well wrapped. Here we go. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. Like, look at that cover design. It's beautiful. Here's the back. It is an exclusive dust jacket for this edition. Also, like, look at that. So pretty. And here's the other side. So this is on top of the original dust jacket is what it looks like, like the regular American one. So like if we take it off, we just have our regular copy of Babel, but it has the exclusive dust jacket. I love it. And then of course the signed book plate. So thank you so much to Fox and Wit. I love the art. I think it's gorgeous. and I'm excited to have it on my shelves. I've got another package from Tor.com, I think. That's what this looks like. They usually send in these envelopes. So let's open it. Yeah. Oh, yay. Okay, I'm excited to have this. It is The Keeper 6 by Kate Elliott. Yes. Okay. I love Kate Elliott. She is wonderful. I knew they had another novella from her coming in 2023. Uh, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Y'all, this is a follow up to The Servant Mage, which I loved. Oh, this is so exciting. I, I had seen that this existed, but I didn't realize it was a follow up to Servant Mage. There's so much room for further exploration in that world. This is going to be incredible. Yes. Okay, so this comes out in January. I'm very excited to read this. Thank you so much to Tor.com. I've got a package. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. I think it's a pre-order. Let's find out if I'm right. This giant package for not a very large book, but yes! It is in fact my pre-order of the reprint of Signal to Noise by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, uh, which I am planning on reading very soon. It is the last thing I want to read before I do a guide to Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, which by the time this video goes up should hopefully already be out. This is her debut. It's got like magical realism, I think. I'm excited for it. It's gonna be great. Yay. Hello, this is a little different than the rest of the clips. I am going to a book event today that I'm pretty excited for. A indie bookstore in Brooklyn called Cafe Con Libros is hosting a signing for the paperback release of a book that I've read and really loved but don't own my own copy of and also doing a book swap where you can bring in books by Black, Indigenous, or Person of Color authors and swap them for something someone else brought. So I'm obviously gonna go. The two books that I'm bringing to swap are Digging Up Love by Chandra Bloomberg. This is a black love romance that was nerdy and fun. And We'll Do Magic for Small Change by Andrea Hairston. I think this arrived maybe earlier in this video and after looking at some reviews I think I'm gonna have the same issues with this that I had with the first book but I think there are readers who are loving her work and maybe somebody at the swap could get something out of it. So I am bringing that to swap and gonna take you along with me.
So I realized I never did a clip updating you on which books I got at the book swap and I also have a couple of packages that arrived in the mail so let's go over it. I brought two books to swap and I ended up picking up two nonfiction titles by Angela Davis who I feel like I should really read. So we have Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Ferguson, Palestine, and the Foundations of a Movement. And then we have Abolition Feminism Now by Angela Davis, Gina Dent, Erica Miners, and Beth Ritchie. So yeah, good intersectional feminist nonfiction. I've been wanting to read from Angela Davis and they seemed like a good opportunity. And then they had a cart with free books and I happened to spy an advanced copy of a book coming out in January. This is Her Lessons in Persuasion by Megan Frampton, a school for scoundrels novel. I've only read one thing from Megan Frampton, but I really enjoyed it and I've been meaning to read more from her. So I was like, I am going to grab this. It's the first book in a new series, A School for Scoundrels, Five Gentlemen with Unbreakable Bonds Navigate Life and Love in London. It sounds like fun. Our heroine is an amateur astronomer. I love historicals with women in STEM and there's a fake courtship. It sounds like a good time. So I picked that up. Then I've got two packages from publishers. I know what the Harlequin one is, but I am not sure what this is. It's from Hachette. So let's find out. Maybe I'll open it and I'll be like, oh, I did know I was getting that. That happens sometimes. Oh, I did know I was getting this. <laughs> okay, I'm actually, I'm really excited about this. Hold on, hold on. Okay. It is the brand new Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I am really excited about this. It had been on my list of things to read even when it was indie published and I just never got around to it. Now it's being traditionally published. This is a queer Dracula retelling from what I understand. I have heard really good things about it and it's got a brand new cover. I actually really like the original cover, but this one has a very different vibe to it, which is, um, is interesting. So, ooh, how pretty, look at that. It's got a quote on the front. I never dreamed it would end like this, my lord, your blood splashing hot flecks onto my nightgown and pouring in rivulets onto our bedchamber floor. But creatures like us live a long time. There is no horror left in this world that can surprise me. Eventually, even your death becomes its own sort of inevitability. Interesting. Thank you so much to Orbit and Red Hook for sending me a finished copy. I am excited to pick this up. And it's so pretty. It also has deckled edges, which... I like, but it is a controversial choice. Next, we have a box from Harlequin. I'm pretty sure I know what this is, and it's a book I'm looking forward to. Yay! It's On the Hustle by Adriana Herrera. It's her latest uh, Dallas novel. I don't know what the series title actually is, but I really like the first one. I love Adriana Herrera. I always have a good time with her books, so I feel like this is going to be great. This one just sounded like a lot of fun. Our heroine does bookish themed bedroom makeovers for her friends, which sounds like a fun job. And the hero is a former Olympic swimmer and heir to a real estate empire. And it's kind of like a grumpy sunshine type thing from what I understand. I feel like it's going to be fun. So yay on the hustle. Thank you Harlequin. I will be taking a picture of this for Instagram. And I think I'm going to end it there. I know I have a couple other books on their way to me but I'm not sure when they're coming or if they'll be here before the end of the month and I need to get the rest of this vlog edited together and ready to go up. So hopefully this was fun. I feel like I had a lot of publisher mail this month but I haven't actually edited any of the clips together so I'm not 100% sure. That's one of the weird things about doing it piecemeal like this is I don't always remember <laughs> like what all ends up in these videos. But hopefully you enjoyed it. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything in this video. And for your question of the day, let me know if you've ever participated in a book swap. This could be something as simple as say a little free library type thing or something more formal. But have you done it? Do you enjoy it? I feel like it's kind of a fun way to get new books into your collection and push ones out that you're ready to let go of. I do sell a lot of books to my indie bookstore as well. But this was really fun. And I loved the fact that they specifically focus on Black, Indigenous and 
person of color authors for the books in the book swap. So I'll probably go to one of them again in the future. Let me know your thoughts on the vlog style footage. Would you like to see that again if I'm actually going to a bookstore or something like that? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, as always, if you like this video, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.